if you read uh if you read my very first story uh about rural broken bow then this video is a good video to watch as a story review but if you've not read that story then this video might not make very much sense to you uh, the community tab story is way back. I tried to delete some clutter in my, uh, in my, uh, community tab, like, um, videos that people set to private or other things that were just taking up space. I ended up deleting a lot of that to make room so that my first story about Rural Broken Bow can be seen if you scroll back far enough. That was my longest story I've ever done, and uh, probably one of the most detailed out of all four of them. But um, it is about Rural Broken Bow, Oklahoma. And the 83rd Group Army, which was a Trojan unit that materialized around Houston to help with the capture of Houston uh, during the actual invasion, before headed north, uh, they helped this uh, PAP brigade here and these two Marine uh, PLAN Marine brigades uh, that were seizing the coast of Texas here. They helped them to, uh, secure Houston before moving north, uh, to their HQ in Texarkana, which was already being subdued by this PAP armored brigade. And their subordinate units were sent out into Oklahoma, Arkansas, and northern Louisiana and parts of Texas like Paris here. Um, and if you remember... The very, very first unit that was encountered was a subunit of the 127th Light Mechanized Infantry Division, and it was out of their recon battalion, a company of uh, Cav Scout recon troops, uh, was the very first people the townspeople encountered, who came into town on a probing and reconnaissance uh, in force mission, which a reconnaissance in force means you're going in there guns blazing, uh, to fight while you're doing recon to send back information to your, uh, your command and your, your other elements, um, to, so that they can piece together intel and use it to formula, uh, formulate their main, uh, aggression, I'll just call it. Um, now here in Broken Bow, you can see that, uh, subunits of the, um, of the 83rd Group Army, like the uh, 1st Armored Battalion of the 11th Armored Brigade and that uh, company of uh, light mechanized, of the 127th Light Mech Infantry's um, Battalion of Recon Troops, which was the Cav Scout out of that recon battalion. And also later there would be more, like the uh, troops from the 160th Motorized Infantry Division that would show up in a battalion. Um... But for now, it was the uh, company of recon troops coupled together with um, the uh, one battalion from the tank brigade and also PAP troops. There were five total companies. Not at first, but uh, at the beginning, there was about two or three companies. And uh, that grew exponentially over time. Now, when the people of Broken Bow, when their town was captured and they were forced into the wooded foothills for temporary security, they got busy and they got to work digging and living like the uh, Viet Cong and other such types of uh, groups have throughout the history of such conflicts. Now, before the Cav Scouts were rotated out to be replaced with three uh, additional companies, uh, this company of Cav Scouts was sent back to Texarkana, which was the headquarters of the 83rd Group Army, the entire Group Army, and they were replaced with three other companies from the 127th. But before that occurred, they were sent up in their role as Cav, as Cav, yeah, Cav Scouts, they were sent in their role to do a recon in force. And they were sent up into the foothills to find where the partisans were hiding and where they had been living. Now, they, you can see here, they've, they've been doing a lot of digging in primitive tunnels and uh, foxholes and trench systems, which the brown is the trench systems and uh, foxholes, and the yellow is the tunnels that connect them or go beneath the ground. 
Uh, you can see on this little hill up here. There. Now, this is in a wooded area, a heavily wooded area, but I'm not going to take the time to meticulously create uh, trees every single spot where there's a tree. I mean, that's just that that's just way too much for what I'm trying to show you here. Now, what they did is they used a lot of these cabins to store supplies at first and also used them as medical facilities for their uh, ad hoc... Uh, medical treatments and surgeries. Now what we see here is when these Cav Scouts come up about a month after Broken Bow was captured, the town, they did a reconnaissance in force to look for these partisans and upon stumbling on their campsite when they went down Route 259 and 259A, they found them and attacked them. As you can see all the X's are all the dead partisans that they slaughtered um, and the Red X's are the very few uh, PLA troops that were eliminated here. And you can see they're using grenades, Molotovs, uh, which they got one of the PAP vehicle, or I'm sorry, not PAP, they got one of the PLA uh, Cav Scouts vehicles in the story. So this is the one that they killed with uh, captured Chicom grenades and a Molotov that, have, that set it on fire. And um, you can see, though, that they're in these star formations. One of these squads busted up into uh, four mutually supporting star formations, and they walked through the uh, area with the with the fortifications, and they eliminated a lot of the uh, Americans, as you can see. And they toss a grenade at this trench here, this trench that leads underground. These are support beams, and then this is just where it's covered up. This is. These are the chambers where they have supplies buried under the ground. All these people underground are unarmed civilians that are taking refuge while the uh, actual partisan fighters are guarding. They have a mix of uh, captured uh, Chai Com and even some American uh, machine guns like this 50 cal right here that was brought from, uh, if you can remember, the American forces that were at the Joplin battle that ended up going south after the uh after the usa surrendered um you can see that various various different things are going on here and you can see an rpg being fired at the uh trench systems here um these larger apcs and ifvs have 12.7 millimeters on the uh, apc versions of the wz 551s that uh the chinese use and on the IFV versions, they have the uh, huge 25mm uh, cannons with the exploding tipped uh, rounds that are each blast like a grenade impacting like these here and these that eliminated all these guys. Um, there, it was a 45-minute long uh, skirmish when these troops uh, and, uh, exited their APCs or IFVs to fight. And you can see them in their little wedges, and these two guys are stacking on this building. There's a few Molotovs are thrown at this vehicle, but they didn't hit it. And there's, an, there's one being thrown in the air from these people over here by this cabin that are stacking on the cabin, while these Chai Coms are stacking on this one. While these troops are in a star formation, you can sort of see the larger battle going on. And up here, on the other side of the road, you can sort of see them being basically wiped out by the PLA, but although the PLA didn't lose barely any of their forces of their company that in, in the battle, they only had 14 KIA and 10 WIA, um, they, the Americans ended up losing over 80 and 30 injured, uh, over 80 deceased and 30 injured. So in that 45-minute skirmish, before the PLA troops got back in their vehicles and left, um, they had to abandon the one that was destroyed and the deceased because it was at that time impossible to retrieve it with uh, recovery assets and also the, the deceased because they still had to contend with all these uh, machine gun nests and everything. It was a recon in force and this loss was a loss that they were just simply unable to, to retrieve. I mean... We've had losses like that overseas, like where we've had burning tanks or vehicles on the side of the road that couldn't be retrieved right away, but they would be later as soon as uh, assets could get to them safely. But as you can see, 
you know, and I'm talking about the invasion of Iraq in 03. This is, this is about a month into it here, and they stumbled on a partisan force that they weren't expecting uh, to be entrenched so well or in such strong positions. I will continue the, 